Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing uh, well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, and you found this for the first time, thank you very much for tuning in, spending a few moments with us. The only thing that I'd like, if you can please do me the favor, uh, if you like the content and you've been here for a long time, take a second, uh, like the video, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to cut this video as quick as possible. Uh, my son has an AAU tournament in Fort Lauderdale on Father's Day weekend, June the 14th. So they're doing, they schedule a last minute practice. So I have to kind of get them there. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, again, pretty much the sideways action continues. You can see that uh, in the queues, a lot of names are doing uh, absolutely nothing in a tight, tight range. Uh, there's certain names that are busting out. There's certain names that look like you're about to break down. We'll get to them in a couple of minutes. The most important part going into tomorrow's session is the macro wise of where the cues are. And if you believe in, in channels getting confirmed, tomorrow or the next day could be an area that we finally get above this channel. Guys, write down this number here. Uh, if you look at the 530 highs, on the queues, there are 455.64, right? That's the 530 highs. If you look at the highs from yesterday, it's 455.58. If you look at the highs for today, it's 455.58. Got to get the message? We need to get back above 455.65 on the queues. If we can get back above 455.65 on the queues, it's going to take down a four day channel. Tomorrow will be day five. It will reclaim back the 10 day moving average, and everything should light up after that. That's the key metric. If we can get back above, uh, if we can get back above the 530 highs of 455. Uh, 65, we should start lining up. So again, if you are uh, looking for shorts and you see uh, these areas confirm, you, may, you might want to uh, reconsider. Some names that are definitely looking pretty good uh, for the next couple of days, if we do break out, Meta continues to go super duper tight, guys. I, I don't think there's a tighter channel uh, for the exception of Tesla, but we'll get to that in a second. I don't think there's a tighter channel that is setting up for a, a potential like meta. This thing is just getting tighter and all it needs to do is reclaim back the 50 day moving average. And this thing could go on a multi-day, multi-week run. Uh, now, every single day, we're starting to see uh, numerous, numerous short-term expiration, uh, $500 bets being you know pretty much consumed on a daily basis. This looks super duper good. Guys, look at PLTR. I, I, I know there was chatter on social media about potential being added to the s and I don't even know where people would even find that information or guess that information. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in uh, this type of chatter. When you, when you know, when you, they were talking about Tesla, it made sense. PLTR, I, I don't know. I don't know if I buy that. Listen, anything is possible. I just don't buy that. However, however, let's take that outside of the equation. The chart looks really, really good, right? Look at the chart, guys. Today, it got rejected right at the 50-day moving average. You see that two times in a row in the last three days? It got rejected at the 50-day. At the That's a big deal. That's kind of the same thing that we're talking about on Meta. If PLTR could get back above the 50-day moving average, we started seeing some $23 calls uh, being traded today. We saw some $27 calls in August and September being traded as well. So beautiful chart, really, really nice looking chart. Uh, the last time it got back above the 50 day moving average, it had a two day run from 23 all the way to 25. Who knows if this thing can reclaim the 50 day moving average tomorrow, maybe this thing wakes up. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that as well. Uh, look at, for example, NVAX, right? NVAX had uh, a huge, huge breakout yesterday. Uh, inside day, right? Inside day, a third of the volume. This is very, very bullish. Watch NVAX. If this thing can get back above uh, yesterday's channel and confirm, 
This thing could wake up. Maybe it takes another day to rest. Maybe it takes another couple of days. But watch yesterday's channel. If it could get back above yesterday's channel, this thing can really light up. I mean, this thing looks really, really good. Again, you can see how organic the flow has been uh, ever since it gapped up in the first place on May the 10th. So that looks really good as well. Let me give you guys a couple of names who don't look good, right? Look at Reddit. Okay, look at Reddit. Reddit has been basing here uh, above above this uh rising support here right you can see how many times it held rising support watch this thing in the next couple of days again remember when you're doing an actual watch list it doesn't have to trigger tomorrow you'd like it to trigger tomorrow but it doesn't have to so watch the bottom of the channel here on rd on reddit if it starts getting below this bottom channel here this thing can, can get hit so keep an eye on that and tesla right so we saw some reports today about Tesla and potential something with NVIDIA delivering chips. And in the middle of the day, Elon came out and said, ah, I don't know about that. We'd have nowhere to store. A lot of nonsense. The point is the stock is still going sideways, but we are starting to approach the bottom channel here. The key with Tesla is not even necessarily losing the bottom. That's the big deal. The key with Tesla is potentially losing the 50-day moving average. Obviously, it's going to be a two-sided scenario. First, it needs to lose this bottom channel. That's a, it's held now basically for the last month, uh, starting, well, not necessarily a month, but starting on 517. So we have a lot of distribution here. The first, uh, first case of business is losing this bottom channel, testing the 50-day moving average. And if it closes below the 50-day moving average again, all you need to do is refer to the last time it lost the 50-day moving average, which was on January the 9th, and the stock went from 235 uh, all the way down to 138. That's I'm, I'm looking at the bigger, bigger picture uh, of Tesla for a potential 50-day uh, loss. And another name who just doesn't look good is AMD, right? AMD is, again, another situation just like Tesla. The only difference is it's still below the 50-day moving average. And every single time there is a rally in the name, they keep on pushing it right back down. It's very, very close to losing the bottom of the channel here, right? Extremely close. It's a name we definitely want to continue to watch in case there is any type of market uh, weakness. And NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been an absolute monster, okay? I don't think anybody can refute that. But the game plan is better than the actual stock is trading. Every single day, if you've been watching this broadcast, uh, I don't buy this thing into strength. I try to buy this thing into, into a rising 60-minute support. Today was such a weird day. Today, the first two bounces, and this is a bad tick here, obviously. Let me show you guys. Let me get rid of this, right? So you can see here, it held the bottom channel today three times. The first two times, I missed the bounce, right, by a dollar, by literally a dollar on the bottom range here. And the first two times, the stock went up over $10 each bounce. I finally caught the third bounce holding exactly the same level. The stock went up as much as 15, 16 points. And then I said, ah, the market's getting a little heavy, schmuck, right? Getting a little heavy when, when they right before they pulled. So I kicked it out up 10, which was more than fine. And then later, you know, a little bit later after I, I logged off, the stock just went absolutely nuts. I, I think the game plan on NVIDIA has to be exactly the same thing until Friday. I, I think what's going to happen is they're going to give us a couple of more days of potential early morning washouts. I want to continue to buy this thing off rising support because what's going to wind up happening is Thursday night into Friday, you know, the last remaining retail who hasn't chased this thing is going to wake up on Friday and go, yo, bro, the stock is splitting. Free money. I don't know where you get free money from, but, you know, I've heard this before. So, you know, I've heard this before. I don't know why a split is considered free money, but okay. Okay, we'll roll with that. But the point is we want to continue to buy dips this thing into rising 60 minutes support and obviously catch uh, the, the the momentum move uh, back to the upside. But I do think if if this thing closes well, and I, again, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. If it does close well on Thursday night into Friday, then we should get a momentum gap uh, into Friday's session. But for the next two days, tomorrow's Wednesday and Thursday uh, coming up, I continuously want to watch this thing into rising support. A again, the upside moves into strength are giving a couple of dollars. As you guys know, in the webinar today, we had, again, three separate bounces 
that the stock gave more than 10 bucks. Again, that's the value of the stock, not at the strength. So guys, I'm gonna cut this a little bit short. I have to take my son uh, to his practice. Uh, and with God's help, tomorrow we'll do it again. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.